With this video, we begin the study of polynomial functions, but first let's focus on the second degree polynomial functions normally known as the quadratic functions. Here is the definition of a polynomial function. As you can see, it is the sum of terms of x with descending powers. The last term is of x to the zeroth power, which is a constant term. And here is known as the degree of the polynomial function. We will call the function of nth degree. It must be a non-negative integer, for example, 2 or 5 or 17. A n, a n minus 1, etc., they are all coefficients, and they are all real numbers. They do not have to be related in any way. They simply mean that a n is the coefficient associated with the term x to the nth power. a2 is the coefficient associated with the term x to the second power. Except for a n, all the other coefficients can be zero. Therefore, it is not unusual for you to see a polynomial function with missing terms. However, a n, which is known as the leading coefficient, cannot be zero. This is simply because, for example, if you have a fifth degree polynomial function with a leading coefficient of zero, then this polynomial function should be called a fourth degree polynomial function instead of the fifth degree. Let's look at several special cases. First, if n equals to zero, then the polynomial function of degree zero simply reduces to a constant function. Here let me remind you that according to the definition of the polynomial function, a0 here is the leading coefficient, therefore it cannot be equal to 0. If n equals to 1, polynomial of first degree simply is a linear function that we already learned about. And if n equals to 2, this is the quadratic function that we will discuss in this video. If n is bigger or equals to 3, we will call it a polynomial function of higher degree. And we will discuss that in a later video. As you can see, a quadratic function only has three coefficients, a2, a1, and a0. Therefore, a more familiar general form of quadratic function is fx equals to ax squared plus bx plus c. Coefficients a, b, and c are all real numbers, and a cannot be zero. Now I'm going to perform a series of rearrangement of this equation, and I hope you can follow my procedure. If you're wondering why I do this, hopefully in a little moment you will understand why I need to do this rearrangement. I start with pulling the a as a common factor outside the parentheses. Then I rewrite b over a term as 2 multiplied by b over 2a. Then I add inside the parentheses the term b over 2a squared, but I also subtract it from the, this equation. Therefore, I am still not changing the value of this equation. Then I pull out the last two terms outside the parentheses, but don't forget, when you do that, you need to multiply them by the coefficient a. And now, this is the end product of my rearrangement. This is what I was looking for. After this rearrangement, now I can propose to rewrite the original form of the quadratic function into a different form fx equals to a multiplied by x minus h squared plus k, and this is known as the standard form of quadratic function. If you compare this standard form to the rearrangement that I did, you realize that h equals to negative b over 2a and k equals to c minus b squared over 4a, but k also equals to fh because k is the function value of the function evaluated at x equals to h. Now the question is, why? If you recall, we learned the graph of a parent function, gx equals to x squared, the squaring function. And we also learned that we can transform the graph of this squaring function 
into the derived function fx equals to a times x minus h squared plus k by following several transformation rules. First, this coefficient a here indicates either a vertical stretch or shrink, depending on the magnitude of a. Let's say it's a vertical stretch. But of course, if a is smaller than zero, then this indicates a reflection of the graph with respect to the x-axis. Next, we have minus h within the parentheses, and we know that this indicates a horizontal shift. It could be to the right or to the left, depending on if h is positive or negative. Here, let's assume it's a horizontal shift to the right. Lastly, this term plus k here indicates a vertical shift either upward or downward, again, depending on if k is positive or negative. Here, let's assume it's a vertical shift downward. And now we have completed the transformation. Hopefully, by now, you will see why we wanted to rewrite the quadratic function into the standard form. This is because we can easily sketch the quadratic function based on the standard form. If you look at the original parent function, gx equals to x squared, it has an axis of symmetry, x equals to 0, which is the y-axis. It also has a vertex at the origin 0, 0. Similarly, our quadratic function fx also have an axis of symmetry. And because we achieved this graph by moving the original parent function to the right of h unit, Therefore, here, the axis of symmetry is the vertical line x equals to h. It also has a vertex. In this case, the coordinates of the vertex is h, k. Now, I want to derive a general formula to solve for the zeros of a quadratic function. Here, we have the quadratic function in its general form, ax squared plus bx plus c, and we learned already how to rewrite it into the standard form. And to find the zeros of any function, we need to set the function to be zero and try to solve for x. So to solve for x from this equation, I want to move this term first to the right side of the equation. And rearrange, we get this. Then I want to divide the entire equation by a and get this. Then I want to take the square root of both sides of the equation. Don't forget the plus minus sign because there are two possible roots. Then I want to move this term to the right side of this equation and rearrange. And this is the formula to find the zeros of quadratic function. And you are probably very familiar with this already because this is known as the quadratic formula. Let's look at this example. For the quadratic function given in its general form, negative x squared minus 2x plus 5, we need to determine a its vertex, b the axis of symmetry, c x and y intercepts, and d we need to sketch its graph. First, let's compare this to the general form of the quadratic function and realize that the coefficients a equals to negative 1, b equals to negative 2, and c equals to 5. Therefore, for the vertex, we know that vertex has coordinates of h and k, with h being negative b over 2a. Therefore, substitute b equals to negative 2 and a equals to negative 1. h is calculated to be negative 1. Then k is the function value evaluated at x equals to h. In this case, h is negative 1. Therefore, k is f negative 1, substitute that in, and that equals to 6. Therefore, the vertex for this function is negative 1, 6. Then, the axis of symmetry. Since the axis of symmetry is simply x equals to h, 
and from the previous step, we already determined h to be negative 1. Therefore, the axis of symmetry is simply the vertical line with equation x equals to negative 1. Then, intercepts. The y-intercept is always the easiest to determine. Simply evaluate the function at x equals to 0, and that equals to 5. Therefore, the y-intercept is 0, 5. Next, x-intercepts. To find the x-intercepts, we need to find the zeros of the function by setting the function to be 0 and solve for x. Sometimes, the function can be eyeballed and factorized easily, but in this case, we're going to use the quadratic formula. You need to know the quadratic formula by heart. And we substitute in a, b, and c, and get x equals to negative 1 plus or minus square root of 6. Therefore, the x-intercepts are negative 1 plus square root of 6, 0, and negative 1 minus square root of 6, 0. Now let's try to sketch the graph. What do we know? We know that the vertex is at negative 1, 6. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line at x equals to negative 1. Y-intercept at 0, 5. X-intercepts at negative 1 plus and minus square root of 6, 0. And also we know that the leading coefficient is negative. Therefore, the graph needs to be flipped vertically. Therefore, the graph should have a downward cup shape. With all this information, now we can sketch the graph. Notice here, for this type of graph with downward cup shape, this point right here, the vertex with a value of 6, indicates the maximum function value of this function. Let's look at another example. In this example, the equation of the quadratic function is not given, but we know that the vertex of the function is at negative 1 quarter and negative 49 over 8. And it also has another solution point that is 1, negative 3. We need to determine the equation and sketch the graph. Since according to the standard form of the quadratic function, h and k are the coordinates of the vertex, therefore, we substitute them in. This function equals to a times x plus 1 quarter squared minus 49 over 8. Now we only need to determine the coefficient a. But since we have another solution point, 1, negative 3, which means that the function evaluated at x equals to 1 must be negative 3. Therefore, we substitute that in and solve for a. From here, a equals to negative 2. And that completes the standard form of this quadratic function. If you wish to, you can rewrite this into the general form, but we're going to keep the standard form because it's going to be convenient to find the zeros. From this standard form of the quadratic function, we can easily find the y-intercept by substitute x equals to 0, and the y-intercept is 0, negative 6. To find the x-intercepts, we need to set the function to be 0 and solve for x. Hopefully by now you can see the advantage of keeping the standard form because it's easier to solve for x from the standard form. And x equals to negative 2 or 3 halves. And those are the two x-intercepts. Now we are ready to sketch the graph. We know the vertex, axis of symmetry, y-intercept, x-intercepts, and an additional point. And also, because the leading coefficient is positive, therefore the shape is a upward cup shape, and that completes the graph for this function. And also, as you can see, the vertex indicates the minimum value of this function.